Functional health is really the same thing as health, but we've been so conditioned into another way of thinking that it's difficult for us to understand what functional health is. We're going to go over the differences here. So in traditional healthcare, traditional health view, we've become accustomed to think of health as the absence of symptoms, as the absence of disease. So diseases when you're not healthy and healthy is when you don't have symptoms sort of thing. But the fact is it's not black or white. Most of us are somewhere in between. We're not feeling really great and we're not having a full-blown disease either. So here's kind of how that works. Functional problems means that you have a partial loss of function. There's something that's supposed to work and it's almost working, it's kind of working, but it's not totally working. Whereas in a pathology or a uh, disease, we have a complete loss of function. So think about it this way. Think of it in, in terms of light, that you're trying to read something and it's fine print. As long as you have really good light, you can make out what it says. So you're reading and then all of a sudden the light bulb goes out and the whole room is black and obviously you can't see anything. That's kind of what a lesion, what, what a pathology is. The function is gone. But if we think of it as a dimmer switch, now you're reading and someone starts turning down the dimmer switch. So at, they start out at 100% and then you go down to 90 and 80 and at 80, you're barely noticing. There's hardly any difference. And then you get down to 70 and 60, and now you start to notice there's a little bit of difference, but you can still kind of make it work. And then you get down to 50, and it's difficult, and you get down to 40, and it's like really struggling, and you get down to 30, and now you can't make it out. It's just too, too little light. And that's kind of how health works as well, that we want to think of health as function, the ability to generate energy, the ability of the cells to do their job, to take in nutrients, to produce energy, to produce signals, etc. If they can do that at 100%, now you have full health, you have optimal health. And as that starts declining, if it gets down to 90 or 80%, you're probably not going to notice because you have some reserves. And because it goes slowly, you're not really noticing from day to day. As you get down to 70, things get a little harder. You, you, your vision isn't as good. Your memory isn't as good. Your focus. Uh, you don't have the energy that you used to. You don't sleep so well. And as you go down, as it continues to decline, these things get worse and worse. You get some aches and pains. And now you start taking some, some stimulants. You got to have the coffee and the energy drinks and the pills to make it through the day. You got to have the pain medication. And then you get down into the, to the red zone here. Now things are starting to fail. Now you got to have medication to compensate for, for things that aren't working, to cover up the symptoms. This is also called a soft lesion or a hard lesion. So in computer language, uh, a hard lesion would be that the hardware failed. You have a, a circuit card, you have a processor, you have a memory stick. Something blows up and the computer dies. You get a blue screen or it just shuts down. That's a hard lesion. The hardware has failed. And in a soft lesion, that would be something like the processor is starting to overheat. It's still running, it's just not working as well. Or uh, in the terms of software, if you have malware, if you have really poor computer code, uh, where the computer just doesn't work very well anymore, it can sort of get the job done, but it's really slow and it's dragging and it's stopping and so forth. So that would be an, an analogy with, with computers. In the body, we kind of have the same thing though. In neurology, they talk about a hard lesion when it comes to things like a spinal cord injury, where you can't move your lower body because the pathway from the brain to the legs is completely severed. It's off, it's broken, gone, not coming back. Whereas a soft lesion means the pathway is still there, 
but it might be having some pressure on it so the signal is interfered with or the brain cells that are sending signals through that pathway have been weakened or they can't produce more than 50% of their output. That would be a soft lesion. A functional lesion would be like type 2 diabetes. The body can still make insulin but it can't keep up because the body has been so abused and so out of balance that even though the pancreas can still make some insulin, it's just not keeping up. Type 1 diabetes would be when the pancreas has lost the function to make insulin. That, that'd be a heart lesion. The, the cells are gone. Uh, we can also think of heart disease versus a heart attack. Heart disease is the gradual buildup, the gradual degeneration. So you have some inflammation, so your body is, produces cholesterol in response to the inflammation, it tries to fix inflammatory damage. Now we get buildup of cholesterol plaques, so we get atherosclerosis and narrowing of the blood vessels, so less blood can make it through to the end organ, and it makes it harder for the heart to do its job, but it can still keep up. The, all the cells are still there, they're just suffering because they're, they're poorly supplied. Whereas in a heart attack, now we get to the point where the cells die because the delivery is, of blood and oxygen is so poor that the muscle cell actually dies and not, com not coming back. We could have brain degeneration. This would be when we lose energy, when we start becoming forgetful, when we don't have the focus or the drive we used to. The cells are still there, they're just not running at 100% versus Alzheimer's when a significant portion of the brain cells are destroyed. They're not coming back. Arterial weakening uh, versus stroke. So arteries are supposed to be really strong and elastic, but if they lose that elasticity, then they can lose their strength and pliability. And now if they break and we have a bleeding in the brain, that's a stroke. And that lack of blood flow kills the brain cells. Something that's talked about a lot is adrenal fatigue and this is because we have a chronic situation of stress. Our bodies are designed to deal with short bursts of large amounts of stress to deal with it and then be able to relax. Our bodies are not designed for chronic stress which is a little bit of stress all the time, hour after hour after hour after hour. So now we get adrenal fatigue. They're working, we're just not feeling good. We don't have the energy, we don't deal with stress very well. Versus Addison, which is an, a complete or almost complete loss of adrenal function. So now we're like sitting ducks. Anytime there's a, a little bit of stress, we totally shut down. So this is the world we've learned to think in. We've learned to think that we either have a disease or we don't, when in reality it's more like we have a little bit or a lot. And this healthcare model works really, really well with infections and disasters and bleeding and broken bones. And this is what, where our healthcare model shines. But most of the cases today are over here. This is where 90 plus percent of all prescription medication and all over-the-counter medication, everything that we try to take drugs to compensate is about functional problems. And when we do that, we are simply covering up a symptom. We are not improving the function. So if we start declining in function, and we start taking some medication, the medication will never help us improve function. It will never turn that dimmer switch back up. So what is health? What, how do we want to think about it? Well, health is about signals. If you take an extreme example, just hypothetically, I know this isn't going to happen, but you have a person that's alive standing up and then for some reason he falls down dead and we hurry up 
and we run all sorts of medical tests on him. So we take x-rays and we take MRIs and we do imaging on him. We run blood tests and we, we run blood panel, lipid profiles. His blood sugar looks good, his cholesterol looks good, his hormone levels are fine, his spine is misaligned, we don't find anything wrong on the MRI. But the guy is dead. He is not producing or processing any signals. So that's what life is. Things that are alive has the ability to produce signals. Things that are dead, like a rock, have no signals. And signals are so much tied to life and movement that only things that move have brains and nervous systems. So if you want to generate lots of signals, the best way is, is to move. So health is the ability to maintain lots of signals in an appropriate way. So homeostasis is where all the signals are there, all the cells have enough nutrients, enough resources, enough oxygen to produce energy and produce signals. And then we have a nervous system that's in balance that we can create homeostasis. That is optimum health. And when that works at 100%, then we have no diseases, we have no symptoms, we have no problems. As that ability to produce and manage signals decline, it's like a dimmer switch going down. And as we lose the ability to generate and manage signals, then we start developing degenerative disease. And there is no drug that can make you produce more signals. There is no drug that will help or assist a cell in coming closer to 100% function. All they do is they cover up the symptoms. So this is why it's so crucial to understand what functional health is, that it's about signals, that it's like a dimmer switch, and why the healthcare system is really, really good at managing crises, but they have nothing to offer in terms of regenerating function. And if we want to be healthy, then regenerating function is all it's about. So let me know if you have any questions on this, if this produced any new awareness or any breakthroughs for you, I'd love to know. Please share this video because this channel, every video that we do is about how to restore function. It's all about functional health on how to get that dimmer switch working a little bit closer to 100%. Thanks for watching.